All right, so let's take a look at sitting on the floor. You cool with that? Yes. All right, let's do it. Okay. All right. So the very first thing she does, she takes a seat, looks comfortable, but it's all foreshortening. So everything is straight at the camera and everything is blobbed together. So we have to work with that. And so I, I definitely will have somebody just sit down and be comfortable, but then I tweak it. So what I'm have you do is I'm gonna have you turn your legs this way. Okay, just be comfortable, perfect. And do you wanna maybe uh, put down your front leg a little bit, like lower it a little bit, and pop out that back knee? Okay, so I'm like, all right, when the legs were together, it was one line, like there was no separation. So I had her bring her back knee up and her front leg lower. Okay, good. All right, well now she's like, okay, well, what do I do with my hands? All right, well, I can, I can do a lot. Um, why don't you put one arm on that hand? Or arm on that knee. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. <laughs> and so she, by default, she's like, oh, this looks comfortable. That, that was nice, That's one thing you can do. Um, she looks confused for that right arm. Okay, so there's a couple things I could do for that right arm. If she reaches back, um, it kind of opens up the pose, but if you want it to look, if you want it like a, a tighter crop maybe, I would put her hand on her thigh. So what I can do there, the other thigh, will you just cross it over? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And just cross a little bit more, good. Um, so I wouldn't photograph that full length because that to me is asymmetrical and unbalanced because everything's kind of on one side and then the legs jut out. Like, it's not nice and curvy. My eye doesn't exactly know where to go. So if I were photographing this, I would just photograph part of it. Um, so in my checklist of things to watch out for, one of the things I'm noticing right now is what's bad. No offense. Her, well, there's kind of there's kind of two things, but one of them is definitely her posture. Uh, she says she fixed it. Um, she's they said to be comfortable, and she's leaning. There's a difference between leaning and slouching, and she was slouching. So I, I will kind of get someone there, and I'll say, okay. And usually that's one of the last things I do. I say, okay, now let's give me some good posture. As far as negative space, that's like the next thing. Remember my whole checklist. I'm checking, going off that checklist here. Um, the next thing that I don't like is for her hand, it's not that I need a ton of negative space, but depending on how I shoot it, it lines up perfectly with the back of her, her body. So I can't see where her body actually ends. So what I could do is I could actually, can you bring this hand up right underneath your elbow? So if I bring it up there, and depending on how I shoot, at least now, I can see the back of her body. And if I ever sit up straight, arch your back just a little, and soft hand, good. At least now I can see the back of her body. Can you lean towards me just a little bit? We can do that. That could be one take on it. Another take is you can put your arm back. Uh, sorry, your right arm back. Good. And so by default, every girl, when they put their arm back, they lean on it. So you see how insanely skinny she is. But look proportionally how big her upper forearm looks. I mean, it looks three times as wide as the rest of her arm. So if somebody is posing, she's like, oh crap, okay, <laughs> you suck. Um, so if somebody is doing that and they're putting a ton of weight on it, I'll say, okay, that's great, but just don't lean on it, just place it real soft there, just real soft. Good, and it, it really makes a difference versus actually leaning. So let me just grab a quick shot of that. Good, good posture. Cute, perfect. And as she did that, what'd she do? Could you see? Open the okay. palm. Okay, yeah, so she opened her palm towards me and she's wearing all black and so the lightest things would be her face and then her palm. So I wanna make sure that she either shows me the pinky sign, like that, that's fine, that would be totally fine, or hides it behind her neck, that's totally fine, anything like that, so this is what I'm looking for. All right, so that's great. And lean towards me a little bit. Okay, good. And I can do kind of right here. And a little bit more better posture, just a little bit. Good. And then bring that hand out one more time and put it on your thigh. And cross it behind a little bit so I see less. Yeah, good. Perfect. 
So what I noticed for this particular shot, what we just did, is, okay, she's wearing all black. Will you put your hand back on the, uh, yeah, bring it on this side of your, yeah, perfect. Right now she's wearing all black. When she has her hand on that side of her leg, all I see is her hand because it's the lightest thing against that black. So when I tucked it behind, now I get rid of where my eye is going. So just as a, a heads up for people that have, or maybe more beginner in photography, okay, here are the places where your eye goes in a photo. Your eye goes to the biggest thing in the frame, okay? Your eye goes to the most saturated, brightest color. Your eye goes to the area of highest contrast as well, and the sharpest. Okay, so if I run through that, everything's equally sharp. So I don't have that tool. Maybe if I was out on location, you know, I can use that for posing to help me out. Okay, the next part um, that I have in there is what's largest. Okay, well there's nothing particularly largest. If I shot from up here, maybe I could make it be her face in this case. Um, otherwise, it's all about the same. But then looking and going to the uh, area of highest contrast, her hand against that skin, or her, her hand against her pants is definitely the area of highest contrast. So my eye will go right there. And that last part about saturation, your eye goes to the brightest area, or the area of most color. Um, when I was talking about clothing before, that's why I was saying, okay, the pair, who's larger on the bottom, you could go with a brighter color shirt because your eye would go there a little bit more if you're really trying to reduce your waist, but she's smaller up top. So you have like all these little tools based on the basics of photography that you already have. You look very cute. Um, I'm gonna have you put your arm back up and cross the arm way over. Okay, so I'm looking at this, and if I photograph this full length, it's too, it's too hunchy, like it's, it's too bottled up. So in the very beginning, I said, okay, you know, this is just opposing essentials, but you've got lens choice and depth of field and, and cropping. So this might be a terrible pose full length. It might be an awesome pose close up. So that's why it's like, know what you're going for, and I could shoot this completely close up. Can you do soft hand on your face again? Perfect. And I think, okay, so I need to move the light a little bit because she's losing, uh, losing detail here. Hold on. Because see how it's all blobbed? If I just lighten this up just a little bit, you'll be able to see it better. So same exact pose for me. I'll try that again. Perfect. Okay. Same exact thing, and sit up a little straighter, and set your head that way just a little more, and bring your elbows up just a little bit more. Good. Good. Okay, so you can't quite see it because of the black, but I would say normally, oh, that, that was better. I opened up exposure a little bit. In this case, you guys can kind of see it. She's got negative space. I can still see good features. I've got nice triangles, like this pose could work. Full length, it totally doesn't. So knowing that whole cropping thing as well, as long as she's got her negative space here, I could lower her leg, I could have her sit up straighter to pull out and elongate there, but that's kind of how I tweak. So those would be my essential standing. My essential sitting would basically see how they, they sit comfortably and just kind of pose them around that. Create triangles, make them comfortable, see how they, if she naturally leaned out on her elbow, awesome. If she naturally leaned out this way, work with that. Would you lean out on your elbow? Uh, just uh, actually lean out on your elbow that way. Okay, so when she does that, I'm looking at it, and that looks cute. But I want you know, even more curve and more shape. So I could, for example, like tuck her knee over and give myself a little more curve. I mean, these are the things I would do in bourgeois photography. So I pick that essential and then I'm like, okay, more curve, more negative space. How do I draw attention to where I want? Okay, maybe I need to shoot more. Like right now, her legs are what at me, or what's at me, so that would be largest. So I'm like, okay, well then maybe I would tilt her, you know, or, or rotate her a little bit. And maybe that would be better because now I've got that nice curve in the background, but I can shoot with her head in the foreground, so now that will look larger and more pronounced. So I take all those like little basics that I knew, curve and negative space, what's closest to the camera looks bigger, what are the assets, what are the flaws, and then I try to build like that. You look like 
Oh, are you, are you, are you the Disney princess? Yeah. She looks like a princess. <laughs> I just thought I would say. No? Not a princess? OK. All right. OK, you can, you can stand up if you'd like. OK, so the next thing um, that I would say is it is OK. It's OK to bring inspiration on a shoot. I would say about the length of time I just shot, I'm just like, this is a made up number, but like I just shot a little bit to shoot, show that I knew what I was doing. I interacted with them. Once you've like kind of covered those bases, then go ahead and bring out inspiration. You know, I've already established like I know how to pose you. We've done some nice poses. Okay. And I'll be like, you know what? I have some great ideas for some other poses. I'm actually, I'm going to grab those and let's see what we can do with those. Okay. Um, all right, you want to look, what do you, like, what do you think? Like, do you want to do something like that? That looks great. Yeah, I think you would, okay, perfect. But you want to lay down and, like, I, I do something like that? It's not, like, I don't know how to pose. Let's look for inspiration. It's, like, hey, let's do something else fun together. So that would be my recommendation for you guys. Okay, so do you want to actually do, feel free to try that one. So I'm going to have you lay right on the ground. Okay, so. The reason I'd like to show this pose is because I see it all the time. All right, when you have a girl lie on her stomach, I, and this, I personally don't like this as much in the studio as I do like on location, because um, then you can play with narrow depth of field. The things that I want you to watch out for when you have a girl lying on her stomach are two major things. Major thing number one is hunched shoulders. When a girl is on her stomach, her shoulders hunch up towards her neck. You still need her to push up and elongate. Or lean out to their hand. But it should never be no neck. It's either elongate or push up. So watch that for that issue. Exactly. Like, she looks comfortable there, but it really hunches her shoulders, and she doesn't have much of a neck in that case. Um, and I might have her, instead of pushing up so wide on her hands, can you spread out your arm just a little bit? See how she doesn't need to, like when her arms are really tight together? Let me see if I can grab this. When her arms were really tight together, she had to push up really, really tall, versus if her arms were a little further, she could still elongate her neck without having to push up like this. So even like a little bit wider base, could you put one hand up to your face for me? So I'm going for nice and comfortable. OK, so the problem that I see when people photograph this, could you kick your feet up? When you photograph it, this is foreshortening. I will see feet out of the back of her head. And I've seen it a million times um, out of the back of her head. So let me just take a quick photo. And so I'm going to have you slouch first. And then push up. And put one hand real soft. OK. So. She doesn't have too much of a neck there. I had her push up, elongate a little bit, but she still has those feet coming out of the back of her head. If I have her turn totally, totally sideways, I'll have you do that for a second. OK, and do the hand thing up again. If I photograph full length, to me, I think it's too balanced. And you will see. It's, I mean, it's, it's very posy, and there's not much, I don't think there's much dy like dynamicism to it. So I would perhaps, um, can you flip your hair off the front side of your neck? Remember that tip I said before? You'll see it's, she's going to have a much longer neck. I would photograph part of her, maybe just right there, and turn towards me just a little. With your, uh, rotate your body towards me just a little bit. Uh, how about your head, your shoulders? Yeah, keep coming just a little bit. Great, right there. Good, and one more. Perfect. And now if I want to do full length, I still think it looks a little bit too separated, so just rotate your head towards me just a little bit more. I would go for like right there. If you are going to do this and you want to see her feet, you can kick your feet up. And right now, when I'm looking at her feet, I'm thinking, all right, mergers. There's too many mergers. If you look at her feet, it's just a blob in the back, so I'm going to have you kick them separated. Let me see. Yeah. Um, like this, as much as possible. Good. Cross. Perfect. A little less. 
just like that. Good. So if you are going to do the feet kicked up in the background, I would pick something kind of at that angle. So she doesn't look foreshortened, like she doesn't look totally flat, but she doesn't look totally uh, kind of linear side by side. And I definitely like kind of the close-up shot. I would definitely do this close-up shot for boudoir because I'm, it's definitely emphasizing the assets forward. It's going to have her face and her chest forward, and then everything else is a curve in the background. So you will see a bunch of varieties of this when we do boudoir. I'm going to do a couple of sitting shots with you, and then we'll move on to the last part of the day. Okay? Can I have that chair? You can have whatever you want, Lindsay. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, Lindsay, just a quick question, a yeah. general, I don't yeah. know that we need to demonstrate anything, but W.R. Gould says, would, would you do things differently when posing an older woman than a younger woman? Well, we're going to do that tomorrow. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, body straight towards camera. You, no, that doesn't work. Okay. So let's do, could you turn your chair that way? So back, yeah, keep going. Good. Okay, perfect. Now, I'm going to have you put your arm up, and I want to see how high that is. Good. That, that was pretty easy. So what I was thinking is like, okay, I don't want her straight towards camera. If I turn her to the side, then she's just sitting at the side. Usually for women, totally to the side is not necessarily good because any of this curve becomes apparent. That's why you usually want to hide it at like a three quarters versus straight to the side. You see every little bump. Um, so for her, I'm thinking, all right, let's turn this chair so she's sitting backwards, but I need her to look back. I need her to turn that body three quarters more. I need her to look back towards that light. When I put her arm up, it creates negative space. It creates a nice curve throughout her body. So this would be another great one. And you can, for this arm, you can put it up to her hand. You can put it back down there. You can put it back up to her face. You can then take the chair, have her straddle it, put her hand like this, put her hands like this. So I'm just going to start with that one. And then I'll end with my little couples posing here. Good. And relax your shoulders a little bit. Perfect. So I'm going to have you do the one with the shoulder up real quick. So her shoulder's a little bit too raised. And now relax it. And pull your hair off the front side. Perfect. So I always do that so I can see her neck. Perfect. Great. And one more. Good. Okay, cool. Did you blink? You looked cute. It was fine. It didn't matter. Blink or no blink. Um, so. To give a little bit of summary then, if you have never photographed, you know, this is your first portrait of a woman and you need to do something curvy or beautiful, here's what you do. You show up, you try to figure out what their assets are, okay, maybe what you like best about them. You make them feel comfortable, you have a conversation with them. We talked about that earlier, so make sure you catch the expression part. Um, and then figure out where you want to start. You have sitting. Standing, leaning, you have all those different things. So pick which one you want and then work with it. What I do is I go for comfort, I elongate, I watch for negative space, and I try to emphasize curves. It's kind of like my order, I'm kind of watching from it. And I start by posing with the feet all the way up, knowing that sometimes the tight crop is a lot better than, for example, you do that one more time, we do that arm up again is much better than, say, maybe the full length isn't quite as strong. So knowing that cropping is kind of part of this whole equation. That looks cute, whereas that's just really boxy. So watch out for that.